Let's take a look at a program I wrote with the help of AI that will let you beam into and out of meetings. So how did this all come to be? Yeah, I'm gonna wear my glasses for this one. Hopefully not, not too much glare, but I'll be doing some typing and going back and forth here. How did this happen? Well, I've, we've all seen people on web meetings with their virtual backgrounds that don't reflect where they really are. Oh, hi, it's Mike. Yes, of course I'm in the office. I'm working really hard. As you can see, there's, there's just you know some people walking around in the background. I don't want you to be disturbed, but yeah, I'm working. It's a really tough day here at the office. Oh, oops. We all know in principle how these fake backgrounds work. There's some image processing that identifies the outline of the person and it subtracts what is not that person, you know, the background. And then there is an alternative image that's laid in and the image, the silhouette of the person is merged on top of that and that goes out as the actual camera feed. But I was thinking, what if we did this kind of backwards? What if we started out by just showing over the webcam feed a static image, a static image of a background, like if I move out of the way, just that. And then, meanwhile, the actual camera is detecting the outline of the person. Now we cut that out and we slowly fade that in over the static image, ideally also fading in kind of a, a glitter effect also. And once the person is completely, um, is completely opaque, you can't see through them anymore, then we just switch over to the live camera feed, so it's no longer the static background image here, it's me talking to you where I actually am. And then, of course, to beam out, we just do that in reverse. We detect where I am, and we fade it out with that glitter effect, and then we go back to displaying just the static background image. So that was the concept. I didn't know if I was ever going to get any time to do it, so I just kind of wrote it down and, and just put it on my someday to-do list as a fun little project. Then a few weeks ago, I was at a conference, and there was a, Jensen Huang, the founder of NVIDIA, was giving, uh, giving an interview, and he was talking about how at NVIDIA they are using AI to explore different options, different spaces that you know, that they, their engineers didn't have enough time, but you know, they were doing this stuff with, with, with AI to supplement it. And I've tried ChatGPT and other code assist tools and Copilot and things in the past. And frankly, the, the two tasks that I've given it in the past to do did not work out uh, at all. The code was either completely wrong or it wouldn't execute, it didn't meet the parameters of, of... Anyway, I decided, okay, at some point I was gonna sit down again and see if the, if the tools after, frankly, only maybe like six months or so had improved so much that they could, that they could help out. And as it turned out, I found myself uh, needing to take a bus ride for about three and a half hours and I thought, all right, I'll try it, I'll try it on this bus ride. I'm not gonna to wanna to do a lot of typing. Let me let the AI do some of the typing for me. So I signed into my account on ChatGPT and this is the prompt to start the whole process that I, that I gave the AI. I would like to have a program that works with the user's webcam. Here's what it should do. First, the program should start by sending a webcam feed of a static image that I will provide, background.png. Second, at the same time, the webcam should be recognizing my outline in the camera feed. Next, when I press T on the keyboard, a live cutout of my image should be faded in over the static image. Not only should it fade in, there should be a glitter effect like the transporter on Star Trek. Finally, once the fade in of my image is complete, the webcam feed should switch to displaying a live view. I did not get an immediate success from that first prompt. Uh, in fact, as you can see here, it just faded in the entire screen. No sort of outline detection at all and, and a lot of you know blinking in artifacts then. And I'll sort of spare you the details of looking at all the different prompts that I did, but I went back and forth about 30 times to get to the final result. The next bit of success I had was, was finally getting it to, I had to ask it, you know, even though I was telling it to use person detection, I had to be a little bit more explicit, ask it if there was a machine, you know, an AI library that could help with that, and it recommended MediaPipe, and so I made a little bit of jump of a jump there. Then it started blinking, still had that blinking effect, and what I noticed is when there would be a bug, 
Uh, ChatGPT is really great about generating code, not so great about debugging its own code because I kept asking it how to eliminate the flicker and it kept coming up with all these different ideas. I accidentally put my camera in front of, my hand in front of the camera at one point and I noticed the blinking stopped. So then I realized it had something to do with the person detection that was going on. So then when I specifically said, hey, try turning off the person detection after we switched to the live feed, the blinking went away immediately. And I had a couple of those experiences. Also, I should say around this point, my trial period for, uh, for the GPT, uh, the four model, in ChatGPT expired, I had to upgrade to premium. I was hooked because it was making such great progress. Uh, but I, I will also say, it, it's really like talking to a junior developer. You would ask it things, sometimes it would, you, things you would think were obvious, um, it, it would, it, and it would just miss obvious steps. Again, I would go back and, and I really wasn't tweaking the code too much. I didn't want to sort of have to paste it. Here's what I did. I would try and get it to correct the code itself. And usually when I pointed out mistakes, it was very good at that. Also, I kept my own versions uh, of, of the responses to all the prompts. Sometimes I would tell uh, ChatGPT, save this new code as the baseline version. And when I would try and revert back later on, it would be some other version. Or some of the functions that, that previously were working in the baseline version would just be mysteriously would, would have uh, vanished. So again, it took around 30 iterations back and forth and not really horrible. I mean, after all, I was, and I was sitting here on a bus and most of the time was spent downloading libraries that it needed like MediaPipe or a Pygame, um, some, other, some other libraries it was using. But uh, it was, I will say, I was very impressed, even though the debugging I felt was more on me. The, the, the code that it was spitting out, you know, was working from that first bit of code, which was around 70 lines and all the blinking, you know, it was getting bigger and bigger. And then finally I got to the, to the results you see here, where I am able to beam in and beam out. But the particle effects are something that I had asked ChatGPT to write. Uh, it's not an animated GIF, it's, it's creating all those little dots and fading them in and out individually. And so after I had this version working and got some feedback on it from some friends, I realized that the next thing that was going to make logical sense was to step it up and to, to use an animated GIF effect for the, the fading in and the fading out. And again here, sometimes there would be flickering in the silhouette image, in the animated GIF. And so there'd be like, a, there'd be like the animation and then there would be a black frame uh, every so often. And I realized that if I told it to skip the first and the last frame in the GIF, then it was, it was smooth. But, but ChatGPT could not find the answer when I asked why it was fading in and why it was fading out. When I would take, a, I added the functionality when you press the B key to take a background image to, to, to use as that static image that you'll fade into. And it was always really dark and ChatGPT couldn't figure out why. It was offering all these suggestions that were wrong. I found on Stack Overflow, someone said, well, it takes a few seconds for a web camera to initialize to the lighting conditions, so you should wait a few seconds. And that's when I added the countdown and that started working correctly. And by the way, you can see, obviously, I haven't been too careful about lighting, but consistent lighting is the key. That's why I let you take a background image from within the app as opposed to just taking it once because you want to really take it whatever the lighting conditions are, you want to take that background image and you want to beam into the same lighting conditions for it to look as seamless as possible. Once animated GIFs were being used, it was just, uh, again, a simple prompt for ChatGPT to tell it that I wanted to have the animated GIFs be in a subdirectory and for it to cycle through the lists that were in there. So now you can press some keys here and uh, randomly get to different effects. I'll just show a couple of them off here. And these are just nothing special about these GIFs. They're just things that I downloaded from the internet. different glitter effect there. Let's try one more. One quick thing I should mention is that up till this point, 
all of the video effects that you were seeing were being displayed, yes, it was using the camera, but they're being displayed in a local window. It's not actually being exposed as a webcam feed. So I went back to ChatGPT and I said, how, don't make any code changes, but how would we possibly modify this program to expose these effects as a virtual web camera? And it suggested Pi Virtual Cam, which is what I wound up using. Pi Virtual Cam under the hood will use either the OBS web camera or the Unity web camera. Those are free downloads that you can find online, but you will have to install these to make this effect work with your web meetings, Zoom, Teams, Skype, uh, Messenger, etc. Now that the code was more or less where I thought it should be, then I started thinking, oh, now I've got to upload this to GitHub and write documentation for it. Wait a minute. Why not let ChatGPT write the documentation for it itself? So I asked it to write a manual for the code, and that basically is the markdown you see on GitHub. Again, not without some problems. When I asked it to spit the directions back out to me in markdown format, it would it would only do part of it in Markdown and then it would revert back to HTML. So I wound up copying and pasting it and translating it into Markdown myself. I asked it to send me the file. It, it, it couldn't generate a download link. Then it said, I can email this to you. So I said, great, email it to me. And then it would say, heck, I'm unable to send emails. Uh, so that, that part was a little bit clunky. Then I needed a logo for the YouTube thumbnail. And I thought, let's try the logo generation stuff out of out of ChatGPT and let's see how that does. So I very, again, wrote another prompt, create a YouTube thumbnail for this video with, can we build a transporter using AI with a, fig, a silhouette of a per, an alien landscape in the background and a silhouette of, a, of me beaming in in the, in the lower left and the, the fonts to use and the effects on the fonts. And this is the image that I got back. So I'm very impressed with the code generation. Still, I think the image generation has a little ways to go. While I was at it, I thought, hey, try and generate a new logo for Ogren's Labs. So I gave it a prompt for that, Ogren's Lab, some kind of a technology glyph, and it generated this picture. And then I said, well, could you make it a little bit less complicated? And of course it said yes, because these things are sycophants. Of course I can help you out. And so it generated this picture. I said, no, you can't, don't make it simpler by removing letters from my name. You must always display the full text Ogren's Labs. And then it generated this picture. All, overall, I'm still really blown away by the experience of using ChatGPT, by getting something like this that from, from, from idea to actual usable product in you know, just a few hours. And I have a whole book of, you know, in my inventor's notebook here, all different ideas. And, and not all of them probably are a good fit for, for using AI, but I'm gonna try things like generating STL files from some of my design ideas. I'm gonna try some more stuff with code generation. I'll try some things with image generation, but overall, a, a, a really great experience. That'll do it for this video. If you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. The links to the code for the virtual camera are in the description below. You can find them on my GitHub and I'll see you next time.